for the second consecutive year, the Ohio Bobcats are ringing the bell. Pat Chiesa with Mark Pierce alongside Mark. Who was president the last time that happened? I believe it was Jimmy Carter. You are correct. For the first time since 1979 and 1980, the Bobcats have defeated Marshall twice in a row. 27-24, to your final from Jones C. Edwards Stadium in Huntington, West Virginia. And Mark, for the third straight week, this Bobcat team went down early but proved their resilience and won this game in the second half. We thought it was going to come down to defense and the Bobcats didn't disappoint. They were the team that showed up in the fourth quarter, made the big defensive stops to win the game. And on offense, the Cats also took some gambles, kept that balanced offense rolling, and those gambles most certainly paid off. But once again, Ohio would start the game off slow. That's right, Mark. Marshall took a 14-0 lead after the first quarter. It was all thundering herd all the time in the first 15 minutes. On the first drive of the ball game, Rakeem Cato found Jazz King from three yards out. And then on Marshall's second go around, Cato found another receiver. Aaron Dobson, one of his favorite targets on the day from five yards out. Before you knew it, Marshall was up two scores, and Ohio was scrambling to try to put points on the board. That's how the first quarter would end. Picking up in the second quarter, though, it was all Bobcats. Tyler Tettleton and company went on a 16-play, 68-yard drive, ending with a Tettleton touchdown pass from six yards out to Troy Hill. And this drive was all about possession. The most plays Ohio has used in a scoring drive this season. And how about Troy Hill, the tight end? getting some reps behind Jordan Thompson, scoring his first career touchdown for the green to white. After a stop on defense, Matt Weller knocked in a 22-yard field goal to cut the deficit to only four. 14-10 is your score. But with just 49 seconds to go until halftime, another perhaps unheralded name makes a huge play in the red zone. This time, Tettleton finds Tyler Fittrell in the back of the end zone from four yards out. The Altoona native puts Ohio ahead 17-14 and Mark what do you know, the Bobcats have the lead heading into the half. Really, Pat, once that second quarter got started, it was very efficient for the Bobcats. Tyler Tettleton goes 15 to 22 for 136 yards and two scores in the first half alone. But keep in mind, Marshall's quarterback also came to play, Rakeem Cato. We knew the name. We knew that he was a very efficient passer, as Frank Solich mentioned earlier in the week. He was 19 of 24 for 187 yards in, the, in that pair of touchdowns heading into the half. So it was safe to say that he was matching Tyler Tettleton stride for stride. And once the third quarter got started, Rakeem Cato wasn't done yet. He would find Gator Hoskins for the only score in the third quarter, a 14-yard strike and a 21-17 lead. And if you're wondering, well, did Marshall score any points running the ball? The answer is no. Rakeem Cato threw the ball actually 65 times tonight, smashing attempt records by a couple of familiar names, Chad Pennington and Byron Leftwich. So Marshall was very one-dimensional, but at least through the first two and a half, three quarters, it was working. The Bobcats answer right back and score a touchdown to tie the game. How about a little riverboat gambling? Fourth and five from the Marshall 27. Coach Solich and company go for it. Tyler Tettleton calls the number himself. How about number 16, Ryan Clark, the converted defensive back, hits him on an out route from 27 yards, cash money, tie ball game, and just like that, we were back to even at Jones C. Edwards Stadium. And Pat, we talked earlier in the week that whatever team stepped up on defense would win this game. Nate Carpenter would answer that bell with a fumble recovery of 48 yards to get the ball back to the Bobcats. Yeah, how about Carpenter turning on the Jets and taking this ball into the herd territory? And now Ohio was given a prime opportunity to put this game away. And they capitalized on it, Pat. Seven plays, only 10 yards needed to set up Matt Weller for another field goal on the game. This one's good from 38 yards out with just 137 left on the clock. But that 137 did seem like it was enough time for the thundering herd. Rakeem Cato, of course, took matters into his own hands, immediately began to throw pass after pass and charge his team up the field. But all of Marshall's hopes and dreams of coming back in this one came crashing down with a single pass. Jelani Wesley, we heard the name week one. He had the game-sealing interception against Penn State. He does it again. He's in the right place at the right time intercepts Cato. Game over. Ohio wins it 27-24. For the second straight year, the Ohio Bobcats bring home the bell. They win the trophy once again. First time they pick up a victory in Huntington in 35 years, Pat. September 10th, 
1977, the last time Ohio stole one from Jones C. Edwards Stadium. Mark, these players certainly had fun, Jordan Thompson especially, ringing the bell after the game. So the Bobcats return back to Athens for some home cooking. Next on the schedule is FCS opponent Norfolk State. Right, the Spartans of Virginia will try and hand the Bobcats their first loss of the season. They will do so on Saturday at 2 in Ohio's confines of Peden Stadium. Well, that's all we got here from Jones C. Edwards Stadium. Saying goodnight from Huntington. He's Mark Pierce. I'm Pat Chiesa. We'll see you back in Athens.